Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on how I plant uh, Theobroma cacao from seed. Um, we start it in our compost. It used to be biodynamic compost, but since we're no longer biodynamic certified, it's just regular old compost. Uh, it's looking very nice here. I walked to the back where the mangoes are to get weeds and I was very pleasantly surprised at the size of the mangoes back there. They're much further along than the mangoes up here and the amount of fruit we have. So it's going to be a late year, but it's also going to be a very good year, I believe. So far, so good. I was getting a little worried about uh, the mango fruit set because of the cold weather and it, and the trees just weren't setting fruit and they're on their fourth bloom, a lot of them and um, they're finally setting fruit so it's warmed up and I thought it was going to be a very early year on our mangoes because they started blooming early November. I was really excited. I could never understand why people didn't want their mangoes to <clears throat> uh, bloom early in Florida but now I understand. I'm looking at this Quimuck tree. This is a seed grown tree. It's covered in bloom so the first year it's really done a really big bloom. This has produced one lone fruit. It got this sooty mold on it last summer, but it's outgrown it. So uh, it's not an issue. In fact, it's coming off this, the old leaves, which is nice, but the new leaves do not have it. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to see systemic fungus on your trees. You want them to have the pathogenic fungi, but be able to uh, counteract it with uh, uh, production of phytochemicals, which we get in our naturally grown system um, to handle abiotic and biotic stress. I guess that would be biotic stress because it's biological, uh, like insect or fungus, fungi. And we do the same thing with our mangoes. So our mangoes have had powdery mildew uh, all over their blooms and, and a lot of people get concerned about that and start spraying copper and sulfur alternating every other week uh, until they, uh, I guess, pick the fruit. So they're dosing their leaves with copper and, and sulfur, which kills uh, the uh, microbiome of the of the phylosphere, so the leaf. And you really need that phylosphere microbiome. It would be just like us dousing our whole bodies with uh, triclosan-laced uh, uh, antibacterial lotion. So it's the same effect. It's uh, that it kills biology, and that's the opposite of what we do here. We are a biological system. That's why we were biodynamic certified. And we try to grow everything as close to natural as possible for the health of our tree and the health of the environment and in turn, the health of us when we consume the fruit of our biologically grown plants. We expect them to be full of phytochemicals and uh, nutrients from the uh, end of endophytic biology that grows inside and on the leaf tissue of uh, these uh, rare tropical fruit trees. So this is the Achichiro tree. And this tree, this is its uh, fourth year it's bloomed. Is it third year? Third year. Third year it's bloomed. Third, third fruiting. And it's really giving me a nice bloom this, this time. It seems to be uh, still blooming and covered in flowers. So I, I had shown the... Uh, the uh, Gaussinia hombromiana male flower, and I, I, I showed how it has the uh, green, uh, lo what looks like fruit on the top of the flower, which this is a obviously Achachiro flower. It has the same type of look to it, and that's the, what turns into be the uh, fruit. So it's, uh, it's a uh, monoecious uh, tree, so it doesn't need a pollinator. It's self-fertile, which most of the, I think all of the New World uh, Garcinias are. So I'm working my way over to the cacao pod area, where I will plant my uh, 
Look at all the fruit on this tree. This is the first year this uh, Achachiro has done big uh, globs of fruit, big droops of fruit. Much, much to my delight. <clears throat> we still have some black sapote fruit. People want to know if we have fruit for sale and, and when we sell it. And I, I let people know when we have bulk fruit for sale that I can like sell large quantities uh, a lot i don't need to worry about running out i'm not i've been honest about this i'm not into selling fruit and i thought my partner was going to set up a uh a uh, online store he, i shouldn't even say anything because if he watches this video he gets pissed off if i say he's not interested in it but i don't see him being interested in it it's nothing against him i totally get it i'm the same way since we got uh, too old, we were all gung, gung ho for doing the fruit fruit farm and and not realizing that maybe we would uh, become too old to like want to do all that work. And thankfully, the 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 fruit uh, takes care of itself, so we don't have to uh, worry about it. So it will fall off the tree. The fruit I like all gets taken care of and I do sell it. I just am not that good at it. I keep hoping I would start enjoying it, but I don't. So I tell people when I have fruit for sale on here, but we do have lots of random fruits like black sapote and, and Uh, star fruit and bananas and cherry of the Rio Grande. If people wanted seeds, we do have those seeds. If you're nearby here, text me. Uh, you can come by and see what we have. Uh, but we don't have like quantities of those things where I could like uh, s supply fruit to 20 people that want me to mail fruit out like I can do with mangoes or uh mb fruit yet next year i have a feeling i'll be there on bananas but somebody had a question about uh our citrus trees and people think that uh oak trees protect uh citrus from greening well i don't believe that it's the oak trees alone that do it i believe it's a combination of those in a a biodiverse system of healthy soil and a mixed range of plants that protect them uh, with the sharing of nutrients and uh, water and uh, phytochemicals and enzymes. Um, but uh, this little, uh, this was a seed grown. We grow all our citrus from seed. This was a seed grown blood orange tree. It was the healthiest tree on the farm. It was so healthy. Uh, it came from an organic certified fruit from California. That's how I, I raise my citrus uh, because I bought too many citrus seeds that never germinate. So even from Florida growers. So I buy fruit and that always seems to germinate uh, when I find a seed. This was a navel orange that had a blood orange that had a fruit in it or had a seed in it. And uh, this tree got greening so bad that I thought it was going to die. It lost all of its leaves. It still has a little bit going on here but it mostly uh overcame it and this tree is completely under oak it's our only uh citrus tree that's completely under oak and it's the only one that got greening and i have little cacaos growing in here there's one right here there's one right here i don't have to worry about greening with cacao i see some others i see a luke's garcinia over there i see a little cacao here i see a garcinia lindero there but I did a cutting of this tree. It's a cutting I did in pure zebu manure uh, to see if I could start uh, cuttings in uh, pure zebu manure. And yes, they started. And uh, the cutting of the tree is right here, I believe. This is it. Is this it? It's either this one or the other one. I'll know when it fruits. But <clears throat> is this tree getting greening? No. This tree is totally fine, and it's not under a, uh, a, a under a oak. So I do know that that area was heavily compacted, and I do know that compaction is the root cause here of plants not growing, or plants succumbing to pest or disease, or plants being dysfunctional. So, uh, the 
nutrients can't move through the soil, the microbes can't live in the soil deep because it's so compacted that when water can't move through it, the, the nutrients can't move through it. So it is a compaction issue, 100%. It was either that tree is the blood orange or this one. Uh, could be this one. There's a little cutie. So, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, I think uh, Pete Canaris is the one that's first stated that the oak trees protect the, the citrus from greening. Not one, one thing is going to be a silver bullet. It's a, it's a community that, that is what's going to protect your tree. It's the diversity and the community of the microbes and the soil health and the, the uh, different plant species and the conditions that you're growing your plant in that's going to enable your plant to get the nutrients to, that will, and the water it needs in the right amounts and to keep the soil at the right pH that will protect your plant from uh, <clears throat> bio, biotic stress, which is what greening is, though it did become systemic. I believe uh, Florida citrus industry's issues with uh, greening is due to um, their mitochondria is damaged and after so many successive generations it's manifested into trees that only live 15 years that can't survive on their own so uh, just as in humans it, it, it travels from generation to generation it may not the, 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 the generation that's poisoned by DDT may not be the generation that it manifests in uh, two generations later so uh, plants are the same same way here's a citrus that never got green and there's not an oak tree kind of near everything's kind of near oak tree so there's one over here way over there so it's in our system i believe that they're an integral part of our our health of our plant our trees here having native plants but is it the only thing that's going to save your citrus i don't believe so so um, that's why I wanted to show that and explain my philosophy. I, I could be wrong. I'm just telling you what I, I, I think. This is, you know, about Florida natural farming and my uh, experience and, and my knowledge that I've learned. So uh, I like to observe and learn, and that's, that's what I'm doing here. So uh, I have my little seeds planted right here. None of the llamas have come up. Uh, my... Uh, uh, my uh, Clementino Rubino from Virginia Fruit Growers, uh, I got two seedlings out of it. It could be two or maybe it's three. Uh, I got three and then I got two of the, two of the, uh, <clears throat> two of his, uh, I think it's two, uh, I see something's eating this one though. Um, but they're, they're okay, I'm glad I got them. Two of the, Oh, uh, the other lime he gave me. I forget what the name of it. Uh, what is it? The uh, Bangladeshi lime. The uh, uh, ginger lime. That's what it was. So I prepared the, the soil. I got compost from our daily. It's our daily manure that I make compost from. It used to be biodynamic uh, compost because I put biodynamic preps in it. But I don't put biodynamic preps in my compost anymore. I just couldn't see any difference in the compost, but I would do it because when you're certified biodynamic, you have to follow their dogma. And once I became uncertified, I stopped following all their dogma. And I believe in biodynamic BD500. I'm not saying this to piss anybody off. I'm just saying that I don't believe that you have to continuously do the BD500 if you're doing a natural system. And you want to be, uh, the whole purpose of biodynamics is become a, as close to nature as possible, which I feel we are. So our compost is just, we clean out the barn and when you're biodynamic certified, you have to figure out how much nitrogen, how much carbon you're putting in your compost and uh, I don't figure it out anymore, but I know it's more a lot more carbon than uh, nitrogen from our manure because it's about 20 pounds of manure and about 100 pounds of hay. So it, it's in the right range of what is uh, uh, required for biodynamic, but I don't figure out, I don't, I don't do all this stuff now. It's just, it's a lot less stressful. So I take and I dump it, a, a load. I clean the barn out and I dump a whole load. This is one day's worth of manure. So. I dump it next to trees that are fruiting and it, I have trees that I want to fruit. 
The miniature zebu manure has shown to uh, make trees fruit and uh, flower prolifically uh, as soon as pretty much you apply it. So um, I'm a firm believer in our holistically grown miniature zebus that we don't give warmers to. We just rotationally graze and we only feed grass, whether it's in the hay form because we lock the cows in night and I have to give them hay or grass form, fresh grass and weeds, of course, because we don't like put graze on on our fields. We uh, rotationally graze and naturally manage our fields. And so it's seven days on each pasture and I do a three pasture rotation. So it's not the best, but it's it's better than no rotation. And it works. And um, I wish I had more pasture. If I had known now how I'd feel about raising miniature zebus, I feel like it's the best thing that's happened to us. Uh, as a family, um, they're just amazing creatures. I love them. And uh, if somebody ever wanted to buy this that was like, had the money, because it ain't cheap, I don't really want to sell, but I'm not interested in doing a nursery. I'm not interested in selling fruit. And I just don't see that changing, but I am interested in growing miniature zebu. Uh, I like having the fruit. I keep buying more seeds, but uh, this is our fruiting cacao tree. So, the compost, I let I do it where we have been making biodynamic compost under an oak tree, and then I let the weeds grow over it. And once that happens, it takes about a year. It gets about uh, eight inches tall at that point. Then I scrape it up, and this is what this is. So I scrape it up and put it in a pot. And it's nice stuff. It aggregates very well. Uh, it's got some active uh, organic matter, which is this hay, pieces of hay and roots. Roots are full of enzymes and uh, phytochemicals that get released. That's why I let the weeds grow over it. I got that from Indian Zero Budget Natural Farming, where they make the Panchagavya uh, compost, and then they plant seeds in it, and then they chop up all the plants when they're like 20 days old. And, and then compost it some more to grow the biology from the roots and the plants that were in it. And, um, but I just let the weeds do it. I, 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 I take inspiration from all regenerative forms of agriculture and make it my own. There is not one white, right way. That's why uh, the whole dogma of biodynamics is like, uh, it's good and it sets you on the right path, but I felt like it wasn't for me and I just didn't, like having to buy biodynamic preps uh, that would come in plastic bags that they would then have me spray. And one of them was like uh, the uh, BD-507 is that uh, the uh, silica. So the silica, which is a known carcinogen, I guess, and then they want you to do a, a, a foliar spray out of it, or, you know, a soil spray, I guess, not foliar. And, um, They mine silica in Florida, so I just didn't feel a need to do that. I mean, we have plenty of calcium, we have plenty of silica here, so it's it's just didn't make sense to me to have to continue that, especially if it has the ability, the powder has the ability to uh, cause cancer. So, um, yeah, no, I don't do that. And uh, uh, this is uh, the cocoa pods. Yeah, I know it's green, but the creatures were getting it. That's what all those little uh, lines were on it. I wanted to see if it would ripen up a little bit. If I set it on the counter, yeah, it was starting to turn yellow. So yes, they do ripen up after you pick them. So it was totally green with just a tiny hit of yellow. It's been two days and now it's starting to turn more yellow. Um, so you can see I cracked it so I could get it open. So I'm gonna open it all the way and show you how I plant these seeds. So there's the fruit and uh, it looks very meaty. The fruit looks very good in this. I've eaten this. This is from a tree that, that, tree that I have there as a seed grown from a tree that I fruited in um, my dirty fingers. I'm just gonna eat this fruit. Mm. Very meaty, very sweet. It was ready to be picked, even green. It's very meaty fruit. It's excellent. This is excellent fruit. I, I'm sure that dry farming has something to do with the, the sweetness and the, the texture and the amount of flesh that we get on our fruit. It's just really good and generally, cacao that I've had in the past from st st stuff that I bought, I've compared with this fruit and it's not as sweet. So uh, this is what I do. I just put the little seeds right in the, 
in the soil. I'm gonna eat some more because they were really good. I don't remove the membrane. Mm, they're really good. And I just put them in here like this. Very, 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 very good. Uh, uh, I could never like say that about cacao before, but it has quite a bit of flesh on it and it's um, very sweet. Uh, seven, eight. Uh, most cacao germinate like 95%. Uh, a 90 to 100 percent or like 99 percent of the the fruit uh, germinate i'm just going to put them in two pots well i might put some in these pots over here so uh the creatures might try to get this because they've been like going after my seeds i noticed Looks like some of the lower fruit may not have been as ripe. And I also leave the, I've, I saw this on uh, cacao growers. So they put the, uh, the, the skin in here. So that's what I do. I put the half the shell in, in, in one pot. So there's one and then I will water it with, with rainwater. And I guess my fingers have gotten too dirty, so I'm not gonna bother trying to eat this. A little dirt I'm okay with, but that was a bit much. Um, but, uh, I'm going to put some of these in here cause I don't see the, uh, the Elama coming up, to be honest with you. I just, I don't think that they were viable seeds. I've grown Elama before, so I know it's, it's not me. So, um, I'm going to do that, do a couple in here just to see. I don't direct so, uh, I do not direct so. Uh, cacao seeds because they really like a, uh, a rich soil uh, to, to germinate, I've found. Uh, they won't just germinate in sand or, you know, in Florida dirt. So uh, I like to, because, the you know, usually I have to buy cacao, so I... Uh, I buy a pod from uh, Montoso Gardens and here's my other seed. And I've seen some people, Montosa Gardens in Puerto Rico, M-O-N-T-O-S-S-O. -S -S -O. I've had very good luck. You can't really uh, start cacao unless the seeds are fresh. So that's why I have to, you have to get fresh uh, fruit um, or fruit, fruit that hasn't been cracked yet. It stores well in the seed pod. Um, so you don't have to worry about them drying out if it comes in the seed pod, but uh, that's where I get my 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 seeds. That's where I got my trinitoral. This fruit is so good. I take back anything negative I've said about fresh cacao fruit because this fruit is meaty and juicy and sweet. Um, very nice fruit. So I hopefully these will germinate. I'm fairly certain they will. I don't see why picking them a couple days early would affect the seeds because they seem like they're totally mature, if not a little bit small. But I got about 30 seeds out of that one pod. I've gotten up to like 70 seeds out of a giant uh, yellow ribbed uh, Trinitora or a uh, green or not green. <laughs> A red ribbed a giant uh, Trinitoro from Montoso Gardens that I paid $15 for the uh, the fruit. So, uh, oh, there's still more in there. So, I'm going to put these in the other container over here because there's just so many seeds. So, I got about 40 seeds out of there. So, if I can get 30 plants out of this, I will be extremely happy and I want to see if any of those Elamas are coming up and none of them are. So the Elamas were a dud 
from uh, Anderson Tropicals for me. And I've grown Elamas before, so I know I know how to grow them. I just cracked them and I bought them from Raoul, which is where they get their seeds from. And they germinated and the germination rate was successful, but um, I'm not sure why they didn't uh, germinate. I, try, I got one more to try right here that was the last. It was the fresh seeds, supposedly. Um, I like nothing against seed sellers. I have sold seeds that didn't germinate also, so it's not anything negative against Anderson Tropicals. I will still buy their seeds, just that that's the chance you take with seeds, and it could be that maybe a creature got in here and ate them, because I'm not watching it all the time. I just don't know. So it's I'm not being negative against Bellamy. I like their or Anderson Tropical. I like their seeds. I I would buy more from them. So I'm just saying that's why I don't give guarantee on my seeds. <clears throat> I sell my seeds cheap enough, and I try to sell them in the fruit portion. If I can't send the fruit to like California or somewhere, then I will send seeds. But there is no guaranteed on no guarantee on my seeds. Uh, and sometimes they don't germinate. That's just the luck of the draw with seeds. They usually do, but sometimes they don't. Some stuff is better off. So I got this uh, fruit tree. I like to experiment with fruit trees from different sources. And, you know, tiny little trees if they're cheap enough. And so I got this little tiny tree right here. And it's the uh, Peritasa campestris, campestri. P-E-R-I-T-A-S-S-A-C-A-M-P-E-S-T-R-I-S. -S 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 -S. And it was in a plastic pot and it had cocoa core, which I despise cocoa core. I'll talk smack about cocoa core. I don't like it. So sorry if you do. I don't. I have that right. Uh, I make my own compost, so I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to that. I mean, look at how rich our potting soil is. Why wouldn't I hate it? And anyway, it was a uh, cocoa core, and so I got I get rid of it. I plant all my trees bare root, and this has a very long tap root on it. And so I want to start it right. So I did put a hole rather large and uh, or deep, and I put this little tree in there, and then I I. Uh, tap it down a little bit and then but when I take it out of the the, the uh, cocoa core in the plastic pot then I rinse it in rainwater and then uh, before while I plant it I leave it in the rainwater for a little bit uh, fresh rainwater and uh, then I I uh, put it in my compost so I'm I'm curious to see how that it looks like a good fruit this uh, particular tree the uh, Peritasa campestris, I saw that they're selling on um, Bellamy, and the fruit looked really good, but they're $15 a seed, and then I found this little tree on Etsy for $30. I can't think of the name. I don't want to say who it is until I see that it survives and functions well. So uh, I like to test the little tiny trees if they're cheap enough, uh, and I've had good luck starting them bare root. I, we start all our seeds bare root, even these uh, cacao that uh, start in here. This should be up in a couple weeks. Uh, uh, I've been growing cacao this way for years, so I know they. I know that they will come up. If they don't come up, it's either because green se green fruited seeds are not viable. But I doubt that that's going to be the case. Or um, a creature got them. That's the only things that could happen because they always come up from seed. So uh, I want to see if this little uh, tree does good. But this particular uh, fruit, it's, it flowers at like a really tiny height. If you go on YouTube and look up uh, Campestri, uh, Peritasa campestris, uh, and they have lots of uh, videos. They're all in Portuguese because it's a Brazilian fruit from the uh, Amazon, I believe. But it grows in like uh, areas like this in full sun and then it fruits when it's like two feet tall and it has nice fruit. Some of them showed small, the wild ones, but one in a garden 
one video they were fruit were like this big but they uh, have uh, anti-cancer bioactive compounds that have been studied by the National Institute of Health. It looks very, very amazing uh, for uh, bioactive compounds. So I wanted to get it to make tea out of. Uh, that's another reason why I don't uh, like uh, using um, fungicides and stuff because they make teas out of the leaves and if you do that you're consuming fungicides which are going to damage your mitochondria uh, it, it, you know we don't, micronutrients and stuff they're mined all all mined items uh contain heavy metals or have a chance to contain heavy metals which uh disrupt mitochondria and affect your health so i'm very paranoid about all that stuff that's why we don't water we dry farm everything there was a time, brief period, where I did connect stuff to water. Uh, that's what that PEX tube is. But only for a very brief time. I do not water anything when I plant it. And um, stuff does good. Uh, obviously, if we can get all this fruit on a uh, Theobroma cacao tree that's loaded in fruit. Um, I mean, I counted 20 fruit on them. This was one that was turning yellow. I want to see if this actually has seeds in it because oh no no hmm maybe it does no it doesn't look like it too small but I'm gonna put this in here um, yeah that just it was like immature some of the fruit ripens early because so I'm gonna put these in the pot the, the indigenous cacao from here and uh, I've had some issues with voles eating my uh, durian so i came by here and this durian tree was completely dried up in fact this leaf is still damaged from it and i thought oh my god so i touched the soil and there was big holes around the root zone so that instantly freaked me out and uh i put uh cassava you know cassava is toxic so i put cassava down in there and watered it really well which i generally don't do but i wanted to drown out whatever was there and i peed around the tree to keep the creature away. I know that's gross, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. And if it worked, it's po it popped back up. I guess uh, sometimes the tree might die. I generally don't pee around my trees, but this is one that it didn't, they, the voles did not get. So I hadn't been watering those, but I didn't want the tree to die. It's one of the newer durians that I planted. So that's just ways I do. I think from now on, I'm gonna plant a, a cassava cutting in the the root zone of the plant that i plant bare root just to detour uh creatures from getting in there and killing my uh eating the roots of the plant so it does something it keeps the uh what is it what's in that cyanide what's in the the cassava something toxic so if it's toxic to us it's toxic to the animal in the root zone so uncooked so the the creatures don't get it they never eat it they don't go around the plants that are like that i also am going to do cuttings of the rare aeroids that's one of the reasons why i got these rare aeroids because they have a high calcium oxalate which is you know toxic to mammals to consume so the roots are going to have more of it because they excrete the substances and they probably get the calcium oxalate from the fungi from the uh that that uh break down the calcium rock the uh the uh what what is the, the name of the rock here i'm trying to blank sorry but so they uh they transfer transport the calcium oxalate along their hyphae they create it and uh, probably distribute it to the plants so because i do know that the philodendrons form strong relationships with fungi from when i grew them indoor or not indoors in a screen room room in pots before i planted them in the ground so i'm doing i'm going to do cuttings once i get enough of them 
Uh, I'm trying to build up my population of them. But it's kind of taken a little while to uh, get them to grow on their own because they were addicted to chemicals for so long. And so I've been working on them for uh, a couple years now. And so I want to be able to just get cuttings and put in the ground with my uh, fruit trees to keep the creatures from uh, moving in their root zone. So here's a little cacao I planted that I grew recently, a Criollo cacao. Um, that's how I plant them in the tall grass. They seem to do good. So I have this, uh, this, uh, meringue tree that looks great, seed-grown meringue, uh, that survived the winter, zero problem. It's looking so freaking good. I'm gonna go look at my uh, MB. I'm gonna do a video on MB next, I think. Uh, but I just wanna look at, uh, I have a MB tree that is uh, a, a, a a female monoecious tree, so it produces fruit on its own. The males can produce a random fruit on their own, but they're not going to give you a huge crop. I've never gotten a huge crop off of a random male uh, MB tree, but I have got a single fruits off uh, male MB trees or, or up to three fruit. But I mean, they bloom so much that it's crazy to think that. Uh, <clears throat> To think that uh, you have to, uh, what was I going to say? It's crazy that that uh, the, 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 the monoecious female trees haven't seemed to produce as many flowers as the male trees. I don't know. They're, they're, the Garcinias are so confusing. Uh, obviously, I'm getting confused here in what I'm saying, but <laughs> hey, my brain's not working that well lately for some reason. I overdid it yesterday, so I'm uh, running a deficit today, and I haven't had my teas in a couple days. I need to make some. So here's one of those uh, flowers like that start out male, and this is a, a Garcinia. But you can see it's very similar. Come on, camera, behave. Uh, it's very similar flower to uh, the male Humbromiana that looks like it should produce uh, fruit, but it doesn't. I want to go over here to this cherry of the Rio Grande, see if there's any black fruit on it. Uh, it's just uh, such a good fruit and it drops off really quick. Last year I had mangoes this time, so this is a cherry of the Rio Grande, a black fruit flowering, black fruiting tree. Uh, these fruit are just now getting dark, but I see a black one up here. It's a really good fruit. It's, this tree is covered in uh, covered in uh, flowers and fruit, so uh, they're not quite uh, all the way there, but they're getting close. I'm gonna pick this one. Look at the size of it. It's good. Yeah, they're not quite ripe. Um, they're ripe, but. They turn black when they're perfect. So I gotta wait another day or two. This one's getting close. One more day. Lots of fruit on this tree. They're good. I love them. I'm gonna, I wanna grow these all the time. Look at this freaking mulberry. I keep showing this, but this, this is the world's best. This is a cutting I did. It's an example of multi-generational healthy, uh, so this is like a third generation of naturally farmed cuttings and it by far is the best producing world's best we have. Not the smallest, but it produces so well and the fruit is so good. And the tree obviously is super healthy. I mean, just amazingly healthy fruit uh, tree. Uh, really good fruit, of course. Delicious. Not as good as Frank's mother's mulberry, but that's the best mulberry, mulberry I've ever had in Florida. Um, they're not ripe here yet, though, so I'm not going to go look at them. Oh, this uh, Garcinia Humbromiana. Look at how big the fruit's getting. 
I wish I could find a, a female uh, flower. I, I keep looking and, and I miss them because I then see fruit later on. It's got quite a bit of fruit on this tree. I imagine I'm going to be able to sell some of this fruit, but I'm not counting my chickens before they hatch, so I'm not sure. Uh, I saw that the seeds go for, what, $6 each? I would think that this this uh, a female uh, self-fertile tree would produce fruit uh, trees that are also female and self-fertile. That seems to be the way it works with the Garcinias. <clears throat> and since this is a parent of, or a, a relative of Mangostana, related somehow, then it must perform much the same way hormonally. So uh, it's got quite a bit of fruit on it. This is the first year it's held fruit this far. So it looks like it's going to continue. It's got little fruit, it's got big fruit. It's got flowers, I know, but little tiny fruits. And I know I could find a flower if I really looked, but I, I just, it's hard to spot them. Look at these mushrooms. So let me go over to that MB tree. MB tree. I really like the Garcinia Livingstonii, the African mangosteen, the MB tree. Yeah, we still have uh, some black sapote. I'm trying to let them ripen on the tree. It's gonna be, uh, we're gonna be full of uh, Garcinia soon. Brasiliensis, Gardneriana. There's a, a, a flower that is similar to the male. Similar, but not quite like the Humbromiana male flowers. I showed in my last video. I don't see any flowers. This is a male tree. They have a long uh, bloom period, but it's been dry, so it's kind of slowed down on the uh, uh, blooming. But I'm going to go over to this uh, MB tree over here and see see what the fruit set on it is like. Here's a MB male of, of, of flower that's not open yet. A little, little tiny flower. It had great big droops of flowers. Uh, so I imagine, oh, here's one. Here's a, a, fl a flower on the male MB. See, it has what looks like fruit on the, on the top there, much like the, this camera is like not obliging me today. See the little like fruit on the very tip? Um, but they don't produce fruit. So <clears throat> it's very confusing these Garcinias. So I thought for sure I would get fruit off this until I saw my female tree. Uh... There's a, uh, here's a female uh, uh, Garcinia tree. They're, they're monoecious, the female trees. And this is the male tree. This is what I was talking about, how much bloom they do. This isn't even the best blooming one, so it has, this is what's so confusing, because this flower looks like the female flower on the uh, Humbromiana. See, there's no fruit. God, this camera, how rude. Um, I need a new phone, I guess. Uh, it, uh, see, there's no fruit on it. It's just pure, pure flower. There's no little dot at the end. I wish it was clear, I'm sorry, but um, it's not. And that's how the, uh, that's how the um, uh, female uh, Humbromiana is. So, <clears throat> but the, uh, you could tell it's gonna be a male flower because they're just little balls. They're just round little balls before they open. But the female uh, MB tree has little points. They're pointed. So they're not ball shaped. They're, uh, they're not spherical. They're more oblong. 
Uh, my phone again, sorry. So this is a female Humbromiana tree. It does produce without a male flowering because this tree has not flowered like this. And that little tree has produced fruit on its own. But I think that having a male tree does uh, increase your uh, chances of getting fruit. But I also think it possibly could create a male tree from the female uh, monoecious tree. So you would have dioecious fruit uh, seeds if it's pollinated. You have a chance it's a male. That's just my uh, belief. Uh, it, who knows if it's right? I'm experimenting. I, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'll know in a few years if that's true. So this is a, a, a female MB tree and there's no other tree around. And this tree has never produced fruit before, but I saw that it was a female last year. Um, but it, it would set fruit in the summer when it's too hot because the, these will continuously bloom after they set their fruit and you pick the fruit, they'll rebloom. But if the weather is too hot, none of the fruit will set. And this tree always started fruiting, flowering in like June. And it would like try to set little tiny fruit, but they would drop off. It was, it would not bloom when the other fruiting tree, our first fruiting tree would bloom. And I had never given it a daily compost, and that's what that is. So um, this this year, I want to see if it sets fruit. I gave it compost, and it fruited at a normal time. And it's not too hot, so uh, it should set. Anyway, this is Eric, and that was my cacao video with a little garcinias uh, thrown in there. Uh, and some campestrous... I can't think of the last name. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit, Fruit Farm. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Please leave a message. I love hearing from you. Uh, thanks for watching.